Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father, and always are bringing you Metalhead's awesome interviews. And today it is an honor and privilege to have Mr. Michael Lindstrom. He is from Apocalypse Orchestra. Uh, he's the backing vocals, bagpipes, the all-around guru, whatever you want to call it. He's the everyman. So they have a debut album that's out right now called The End Is Nigh, and it's out right now. So we're going to be talking to him about that. So Michael, how's it going? Oh, everything's just fine here. Uh, everything has gone <laughs> according to plan with the release and everything, and, uh, and it has been re- received uh, uh, very well. Well, it surpassed all our expectations, so we're very happy. So what's impressed you the most about making this debut album, The End Is Now? What, what's caught your eye or impressed you the most about it so far? That we finally got it out at all, because we've been working on it for so long, for so long, I think we recorded for over eight or nine months, including mixing and everything. But, uh, well, we're just very happy the way it all turned out, since it was such a, a behemoth job, so to speak, with all the the choirs and all the channels and, and everything, and, and, it, it, <laughs> and it worked. So that's, uh, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, now you guys did take a while to get this out. I think, what, 2016, you guys started uh, actually trying to get it out more. Is that right? No, we started recording in, uh, in 2016, uh, okay. in summer. Uh, we, got, we signed with uh, our record label and started recording right away. We worked lots of late nights, and since we're perfectionists, it, <laughs> it tends to take a little bit more time than it, than it should. For well, sure. But, uh, uh, well, we were very happy anyway, so, yeah. Producing-wise on this album, did you guys produce this album, or who actually produced it? That depends on how you see it, but uh, mostly me and Eric did all the, the work there, because we, we recorded almost everything, and uh, and we did, like, some kind of rough mixing. But then uh, Per Nilsson of Scar Symmetry did the mixing, and, and he had a lot of ideas, too, so... But it, it, was, it was a joint effort, so to speak. Now, what about pushing yourselves on this album? How, you know, when you and, um, is it uh, Larson? I call him Larson. But, yeah, Larson. Uh, <laughs> you know, you and Eric, when you guys did this, uh, how hard did you guys push yourself on this album? And I know you said you guys are perfectionists, but let's talk about this a little bit. How hard did you push yourself on this? Oh, well, like... Uh, Recording the, the the singing, the the lead singing. Uh, I think we spent like a week just on that. So we put uh, Eric in a, in a closet, and we didn't let him out <laughs> until a week <laughs> later, because because we we really pushed him really hard. He <laughs> and uh, we had help from a, a friend of ours called Arkan, and he has he knows a lot about uh, uh, recording vocals. Uh, he has a project called uh, Mr. Walker. It's more like a gent kind of style music, but he uh-huh. he he's a perfectionist also, and <laughs> so uh, we 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 really liked working with him, and he pushed Eric really hard and looking for small small details in everything, and I don't know how many takes it was to get everything right, but uh, well that that that's the first thing that comes to mind when <laughs> about pushing ourselves, but then a lot, there's a lot of takes on everything. So um, it was uh, well painstakingly, but very fun to do it. I feel bad for Eric. You get in the closet, you don't come out to his rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, he likes to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> is there any songs off this album that stand out more to you than any possibly on? I mean, I know these are like your babies, but is there anything that sticks off of it the most for you? Any song? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question, but I would say um, "Here Be Monsters" probably, since it's it's such a long song and uh, very lots of different parts, and it has uh, it has everything that we like, uh, like growls and uh, very composing. It was very fun, but it was very hard at the same time because usually from the beginning it was a lot longer. Now it's just ten minutes, but. <laughs> While while we were making it, it was like 14 minutes or something. But we we felt like this is too long. We have we have to kill our darlings on this one. Mm. And uh, well, that's that was special. So uh, yeah, that, I, I would say that that song. But uh, also the Garden of Earthly Delights, since since it's such like a catchy tune and it has worked very well with with the audience and and the YouTube video for it. 
also. Now, this band was formed by yourself, of course, and your partner in crime, Eric Larson. When you guys mm-hmm. are wanting to do this, what led you to keep this a medieval tales of the plague, hell, and the meaninglessness of war and suffering music, you know, and band? Or did it just mm. just happen all of a sudden? Not really. I've been into, me and Eric have been into medieval music for quite some time, mm. and uh, folk music and, and such. And we, we've been playing together before in other constellations, in other bands, with similar themes, but more like folk rock, but with medieval ballads and, and, and stuff. But uh, we felt that this, no one else was really doing this. This kind, we want to make it dark and uh, like uh, the, the the dark parts of the the medieval times, and not not like catchy folk metal, you know, Vikings and glory of battle and right. drinking mead. That's not really our our style. So so we chose this instead. How so, much yeah. how how much growth musically have you seen yourself and Apocalypse Orchestra go through? up to the release of this debut album, or has it just been more of a personal growth as a, as a person and as a musician for you? Both, I would say. We Now we know how much work it is to get to get an album out. Right. And, uh, well, as, a, as I understand, we are a bit, bit extreme on that part since, since we have so many, so many <laughs> sounds. In our music, <laughs> but 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 yeah, it has been been uh, growth both person personally and musically since we had to rehearse a lot and and uh, do things over and over and over again and and uh, recording the choir was that was really awesome um, and and well Eric did a, did a really good job on that one and it was very fun participating in it since since I just I just sing in the choir and Eric did all the the work behind it so to speak. Well, it's good you got different music in it because I mean, hell man, I mean you do the same music over and over, it's going to get stale if there's nothing new in it. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we we try to 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 mix it up a lot and uh, we want uh, lots of different nuances, I think the word is, so it doesn't get boring at the same time since since our songs are so long things need to happen in them right um so yeah that's how we work now do you guys do anything differently michael during the writing and recording process to help yourself uh keep your minds open and fresh and stay focused on creating the style of music that you do do you do anything differently um we we usually do it it's a bit like this it's me and eric composing and and doing like rough cuts of the songs and then we bring in the rest of the band and they can tell us which parts that sucks and <laughs> which parts <laughs> is okay and 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 that that's really important to cuz you tend to go blind or or deaf in this case when you listen to something too much right. uh, and 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 we, we sometimes we just go into detail too much like there are some some church bells in our music and we can like tweak them for uh, like uh, 20 minutes just oh it needs to be a bit louder or be a bit softer and and so it's very good to to bring in other people so so things get done uh, and and that's uh, the the other three in the band they are very good at that and 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 give us new angles on on how to solve certain problems when when some things don't work we we tend to to send send it out to the others and they have a listen and and say what they think so yeah what do you hope the fans take away from this debut album, The End Is Now, once they start listening to it, or just Apocalypse Orchestra's music in general? Well, first, I hope it's an album that uh, that people want to listen to again and again, uh, and 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 an album that people remembers. Since uh, there are a lot if for death metal, for for example, they're like. I don't know how many death metal releases there are every year. So how do you remember them all? And and that's what we want. We want people to remember this album like ten years from now. And that's uh, and another thing. I I really like the the medieval melodies, and I think it's really cool that uh, music that is like eight hundred years old can be can be heard again, uh, and that people get in get an interest in that and and checks out this, the the origins of, of the parts that we have borrowed. So uh, I think that would be a really cool thing if people did. Yeah, I think it's so damn cool that you guys are going back 800 years and, and reviving this music that, you know, let's face it, folks, th- this is the, the actual 
generation of music that started. This is what started it all, you know, from back in the day like this. Without that, they wouldn't be no rock and roll or anything, country, bluegrass, or anything like that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, and, and there was probably music <laughs> before the ones that we used, but these, many of these are like the, the first ones that got written down. Right. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're really, really old and... Yeah, I think that is that is so cool to be able to use this music and and make it live again. What can fans expect at a show from Apocalypse Orchestra when they come to see you guys? It depends on the venue. The smaller venues, well, it's it's we we do we do a real concert and we bring like candelabras with the candles on and and we have a uh, graveyard cross made by our bassist because he's uh, he's a blacksmith so he he forced that for us. Nice. Uh, yeah. But if if we like a, a full blown show, uh, we want uh, we have fire breathers and we have a friend who dances with fire in her hands and we have animations in the backgrounds that is made for each song. Well, we want uh, we want like not just music and uh, a bunch of dudes uh, banging their heads on sta- stage. We want <laughs> we want to give like a whole experience. So so uh, well. We would do even more if we could, but it's usually about. We, 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 you're, it's not often you're allowed to have fire indoors. <laughs> True. But uh, and uh, sometimes we have a plague doctor with us too, and yeah, we would uh, we would really want to do bigger stuff. So this uh, we had a re- release party a few weeks ago, and then we had a live choir with us, and that was so powerful. And. Uh, yeah, that that's the kind of show we want to want to give. Do you like the digital era of recording albums and social media right now that we're in right now? Do you think it's helped you guys out a little bit more, possibly? Uh, yeah, uh, recording digitally, it's. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this album had would, would have been uh, possible without it because we work a lot on the computer. We record everything and then we 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 cut the parts and we yeah lots of cut and paste and try out and. Uh, we don't write our songs in the rehearsal room. We we write them on the computer, so to speak. Uh, we we record everything. And uh, well, social media, yeah, I would say uh, it has had helped a lot. So so like like YouTube and our video that has I think it reached seven hundred thousand views. Wow. Uh, just just uh, yesterday, and that's uh, very good for us since a lot of people find us through that video. So yeah, I I think it's a help. But at at the same time. There has never been so much new music as it has been as it is today, uh, since it's a lot easier to make. So it's easier to make it, but a lot of more competition, so to speak. What does Apocalypse Orchestra bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now, Michael? If anything, possibly. If anything, possibly, I would say medieval metal. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm not sure if I have found any other band that does it. Uh, well, there's I think there's an American band called Obsequiae. That, that that does like medieval metal, but they only use electric guitars and and drums and bass. So I think we're yeah I, I haven't found anyone else that does does it the same way as we do. Uh, some some people may claim that Elevatia sounds uh, we sound like them, but uh, well they're they are more Celtic uh, and we are medieval. So so you guys are pretty much the Metallica of the medieval orchestras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to see it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you? First, it was to get girls. Ah. Uh, I started playing guitar when I was fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get any girls, but I found out that it was really, really fun to play music. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, that happened, and uh, well, I, I played guitar and, and bass for a couple of years, and then I heard uh, a Swedish group called Garmana, uh, which play they play uh, medieval ballads in like a rock rock costume and uh, and they use the hurdy gurdy a lot so then i felt i need i need that one that instrument i need it so i bought that one and well the rest is history so to speak so is there any show or moment that stands out more to you being part of apocalypse orchestra be you know you're on stage going i cannot believe this is happening or or a moment where the fans absolutely just went batshit over your guys music let's talk about that yeah, well, uh, of course, it's the, the symphonic orchestra gig that we had. We participated in a competition, and we won first place, and the prize was to play with uh, our city's own symphonic orchestra. So 
two of our songs uh, was arranged for symphonic orchestra and a full choir and uh, well that that's we felt like oh shit have we peaked right now <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and that was our second gig that we ever did so uh, that was amazing it, and it's uh, it's caught on tape too so you can see that on youtube but uh, then the the last uh, gig we had our release party was uh, it was awesome since a lot of people was singing along in the choirs and 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 they knew the lyrics and that hasn't happened before so uh, that was really awesome michael if you could work with any musician dead or alive or any band that's broken up that you'd like to see back together or whatever for maybe a day or two who would it be it would be peter Steele from typo negative nice may, may, may he rest in peace uh, I, I'm a really huge type of negative fan, and uh, I was heartbroken about when he died. So it would be, it would be them, no no, <laughs> hands down. Folks, this debut album is out right now. It's from Apocalypse Orchestra. It's called The End Is Nigh, and you want to pick this up. Medieval Orchestra, folks. Uh, don't get any better than that in, in my book. Stuff like that. I like I like a lot of horror stuff, so this fits right into my style. So. Michael, my good man, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, tour dates, buy this album? How can they do that? Uh, they can buy it from uh, directly from our record label, or they can uh, most... We have a worldwide uh, distribution, so so uh, it, it should be be available at, at most places where you buy records. It, wouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem to find us. Before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Of course. This is Michael Lindstrom from Apocalypse Orchestra, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you for, for speaking to us.